It's a very good evening from New York JFK and this is me walking down the jet bridge to only my second business class flight. Tonight I'll be flying with Virgin Atlantic in upper class back to London Heathrow. As I was walking towards the aircraft I was thinking to myself I'm almost getting used to upper class but of course that'll have to change. This might never happen again. I'll drop in a little plug for the outbound flight I've got with Virgin Atlantic in upper class. Now that was in seat 10K, but tonight's a bit different and a little bit special. I'll be in seat 1A for this one. When I booked this flight, I went straight to the seat allocation and that's free with Virgin Atlantic. And I noticed that 1A was available. Now, to be honest with you, I just booked it more for the gimmick of it and for the fact that I've never been this far forward in an aircraft, especially in a white-bodied jet. So I thought, yeah, I'll just take 1A, not realising that, in my opinion, it's so much better than the other seats in upper class. Hello. Thanks very much. Cheers. Now here's the reason I rate the front row of the upper class cabin in the A350 so highly. That side section there, you can reach that with your feet with the seat in any position at all and that makes such a difference to the comfort on this flight. Also there's loads more room for your feet when you're in bed mode. And just to reiterate, you'll only find this setup in the front row of the upper class cabin. The TV's a bit different here as well, but that's just different, it's not better or worse. I took the advice of one of my very favourite YouTubers, Noel Phillips, to get to the toilet early and get changed into my Virgin Atlantic pyjamas. And you'll see why in this next shot. Everyone wears them, so it's a very busy time on board. Uh, we're all uh, sealed up, ready to go. Last door to close uh, before we can push back here from the terminal at uh, John F. Kennedy. So expecting to leave our stand a few minutes ahead of schedule. Flight time on the paperwork in front of me is 5 hours and 46 minutes. So uh, hoping to have you into Heathrow nicely ahead of schedule. An update on that to come shortly before our top of descent point. Flying conditions en route, a uh, little bit of wind here. Give us, give us a few lumps and bumps in the lower levels once we're through that. Expecting nice smooth conditions all the way home, helped by some nice uh, tailwinds across the Atlantic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to explain the safety equipment and procedures for this A350 aircraft. For those of you travelling in upper class today, you'll need to also attach your shoulder strap to your lap belt, which the cabin crew are now demonstrating. You will find a life jacket under or beside your seat. Please only take it out if we land on water. So the good news from the flight deck that this flight was only going to take 5 hours and 45 minutes. Now I don't actually think this is great news, especially when you're in upper class. I don't think it gives you enough time to sleep and that's one of the problems with this flight. It's just too quick. Even if you skip on board service altogether, by the time you've got your bed set up, that'll give you barely 5 hours sleep before you have to get ready for landing again. And I don't think anyone would want to be going to a big important day in the office after that. The good news for me tonight was that there was a massive queue leaving New York, so that gave me extra time in this beautiful seat. But all too soon it was our turn to use the runway, so it's time to cue that sound of unmistakable awesome power.
After takeoff, we made a quick left turn out of JFK and you can still see the airport down there behind us. So let's take a quick look at our route for the overnight flight back to London. After takeoff, we head northeast over Newfoundland, and by that stage, we're already at our cruising altitude of 39,000 feet. Then it's quite a direct route over the Atlantic, crossing the southern tip of Ireland and Wales, and then directly into Heathrow. I took this flight just for fun and of course to film some of it for the channel as well but there was no need for me to get that much sleep so I was more interested in taking advantage of the service. There's no way I wanted to sleep through this flight. Uh, thank you very much. There you go. Cheers. To start I took this miso corn soup. Now it doesn't look much but it was absolutely delicious. For the main course, I went with the wild boar meatballs with pasta. Now this probably wasn't the smartest choice for this time of night, but I just couldn't resist it. I definitely left the best to last though, and I'm a sucker for chocolate cake, so I had to go for this one. And you'll probably be able to tell by my face how much I rated it. They asked if I wanted any more, and I actually turned it down. What an idiot. After service was all complete, it was time to get a little bit more comfortable and think about getting some sleep. Now the cabin crew would be delighted to do this for you of course, but I quite like the novelty of making up my own bed in the sky. Despite my enthusiasm for making up the bed myself, you can see here I am no expert at it. But I tell you what, this is one seriously comfortable bed, and as I said before in this video, with the front row of the upper class cabin, there's so much more room for your feet, and for the rest of you in general. I had some sound problems in this little clip, but the point I'm trying to make is that there's still so much room, even at 6 foot 1 with my feet down at the end of the bulkhead. A problem flying upper class is that these overexcited big kids are just never going to get any sleep. I did eventually end up getting about two and a half hours, but it wasn't long before the cornflakes and the bacon butty were on my table. Of course, you can always just skip breakfast and get some extra sleep on board, and then you've also got the option of the Revivals Lounge at Heathrow Terminal 3. This is a great place for a nice breakfast and even a hot shower. You can see what I thought of the Revivals Lounge in my Heathrow Clubhouse video. As we commence our final approach into London Heathrow, it's time to reflect on another incredible experience with Virgin Atlantic in upper class. If like me you're lucky enough to fly upper class in one of the A350s, my top tip would be to book early and nab one of those front row seats, they make such a difference. As a first time, well now second time business class flyer, it's really difficult to be too critical, but the in-flight entertainment was the thing that let this flight down again. The tail cam and the map didn't work at all. But to be honest with you, the hard product and the service more than made up for that. So thanks again to everyone at Virgin Atlantic, even if this ends up being my only upper class experience, it's been a beauty, I've loved every minute of it. But my biggest thanks go to you for watching this video and for all your support and kind comments. I'm really looking forward to sharing some more content with you soon. Of course, with everything that's going on in the world at the moment, that might be a bit different, but I should be back with some videos very soon.